Cape Cod Broadcasting weaves the listening environments of 99.9 WQRC, Ocean 104.7, WFCC Classical 107.5, Cape Country 104, and CapeCon.com's website experience to reflect the lifestyles of the people who live, work, and play on Cape Cod. We hope that you enjoy this podcast. I'm Matt McCarthy. This is Sunday Journal. The Community Development Partnership will host a forum called The Art of Growing a Design-Based Business on Thursday at the Wellfleet Preservation Hall. I'm joined this morning by Jay Coburn. He's the Executive Director of the Community Development Partnership. Mr. Coburn, thank you so much for joining us on Sunday Journal. Thanks for having me, Matt. I'm wondering if you could just talk a little bit uh, about the Community uh, Development Program as a whole. Sure. We're a 20-year-old nonprofit community development corporation. Uh, providing uh, economic development programs as well as uh, creating and preserving affordable housing uh, on for the uh, eight towns that comprise uh, the Lower Cape, so from Harwich, Brewster, all the way out to Provincetown. So you're predominantly a, lo- a Lower Cape organization. Uh, do you do any work uh, outside of the Lower Cape, or is it just those eight towns no, you mentioned? Pretty much com- uh, confined to the uh, Lower Cape. Mm-hmm. And those eight towns are? Uh, Brewster and Harwich, Chatham, Orleans, uh, East Ham, Wellfleet, Turo, and Provincetown. Okay, and you mentioned that you're involved with the business community. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about your involvement and what you do uh, with the business community on the Lower Cape. Sure. So we have um, a number of programs that uh, that we have worked with over the years uh, to try to uh, uh, create uh, more uh, small businesses and more economic opportunity in our communities, particularly for our neighbors who are of uh, low to moderate uh, income. And so we provide a lot of uh, technical assistance uh, and uh, support to uh, people who are either thinking about starting a business or already have a business and are trying to grow that business. Um, and so that could range anything from a course uh, in uh, and how to use QuickBooks, which we've got some of those uh, courses actually up and coming in the, in the next few weeks, to uh, one-on-one uh, counseling um, that we do in partnership with the uh, SCORE mentor program. And then what we're probably best known for is a microloan program that's been around for about 18 years. We'll provide uh, a loan of up to $40,000 uh, to a new business or a business looking to grow. Um, and these are typically going to businesses that are uh, not yet bankable. Uh, and so in addition to f- uh, structuring a loan, we also uh, provide a lot of support unto that business to make sure that they succeed and that they can pay that loan back. back. And over the last uh, 18 years, we've loaned out over two and a quarter million dollars to 150 uh, small businesses. And I'm curious what the process is like uh, about deciding which businesses get the loans and, and how people would apply for, for such a thing. And, and how do you develop these partnerships uh, with businesses that you're essentially making an, an investment in? Sure. So we uh, uh, you know, certainly promote our, uh, our, our loan program and our support services. Uh, a lot of the referrals that we get for those uh, programs actually come from some of the commercial lenders and our, our partners in the, in the uh, uh, banking business here on the Cape, particularly the, the great community banks that we have in our community, uh, like Siemens and the Cape Cod Five and the Cooperative Bank of Cape Cod. Uh, they'll often refer uh, folks uh, uh, to us. Uh, and and uh, what we do is uh, you know, we have a, a committee that's comprised of uh, local business people and bankers uh, who review an application, and it really starts with you know a sound business plan uh, and having a business owner be able to make the case uh, that with financing they can grow either start or grow their business uh, and and and, uh, pay, and pay back the funds uh, so that we can then turn around and, and loan that uh, uh, money out. Again. Again, to another business owner. And on a yearly basis, uh, how many applications would you say that you get? We probably get uh, about a dozen inquiries. Um, you know, sometimes as people sit down and talk things through with us, they realize that they're not quite ready, or that their 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 you know their idea or their concept needs uh, further development. But we typically um, do about four to five loans uh, per year. Uh, the the kind of core uh, fund that we have for this loan fund uh, is about two hundred seventy five thousand dollars, and so we keep recycling that uh, year to year. And uh, how could a person go about learning more about this process? Do you have a, a website with uh, any information uh, about Absolutely. the loans process? Yep, they can go to our website, which is uh, capecdp.org. 
and there's uh, contact uh, information there to uh, reach out to our uh, economic development uh, staff, as well as a full uh, description of, of the loan program. And even people who are just thinking about exploring what kinds of resources uh, are, are available um, in terms of technical assistance and business support, or if people are interested in some of our workshops and classes, uh, like the QuickBooks class and the upcoming uh, uh, design and uh, business forum, uh, they, uh, they can find all of that information at uh, capecdp.org. Now, you mentioned the uh, Design and Business uh, Forum. That's coming up uh, in a little bit. We'll get into that in a few minutes. We're talking with Jay Coburn. He's the Executive Director of the Community Development Partnership. I know uh, one of your big goals is to uh, increase affordability and availability of year-round housing on the Cape. And, And how are you going about that? So we um, own uh, or manage about 67 units of affordable rental housing, uh, and that's uh, and that housing exists in 15 uh, different locations uh, uh, between Harwich uh, and Provincetown. Uh, the, the the affordable housing we provide, you know, ranges uh, uh, in uh, small, you know, one unit uh, uh, condo uh, to uh, we've got a couple um, um, projects that are uh, uh, 12 units, and uh, and these are all for uh, uh, low to moderate income uh, residents who you know have to income qualify. Since all of these um, projects are or have been you know subsidized by different uh, funding streams that are, are in place to support the availability of affordable housing, and we are uh, often you know we you know continue to look uh, for other opportunities to create more affordable housing. I mean, you're probably aware of just the tremendous need there is on the Cape in general, but particularly on the Lower Cape where the cost of our both owning uh, uh, housing and also rental housing really has nothing to do with the wages that people can make working jobs here on the Cape, that because of our second home and vacation uh, markets, that that's what really drives the price of, um, of, of, real, of real estate, of both rentals and purchase, uh, creating what we call an affordability gap where, you know, the price or purchase price or the rental price is just way above um, the income uh, uh, levels of, of, of the average worker here on the Cape. So you find that the seasonal nature of Cape Cod uh, really can make things difficult when it comes uh, to the overall availability of housing. Absolutely. You know, the Cape Cod Commission uh, has released a really uh, interesting, interesting set of statistics that, that I think really captures the problems with, uh, with uh, affordability and, and particularly in the rental uh, situation. And, 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 you know, what, and what it found is that the average you know, worker who's making minimum wage uh, in order to, uh, to uh, afford an apartment, um, uh, you know, to, in the average price two-bedroom apartment on the Cape, would have to be working 120 hours a week uh, in order to be able to afford. That, uh, that that apartment, and so um, you know, we really have a lot of work to do in the whole in the affordable housing uh, arena. And what kind of steps do you think that they can be taken? I mean, that certainly the statistics you just presented uh, seem kind of daunting. What kind of steps do you think need to be taken to to make it more accessible? Well, we definitely need to be building and creating more affordable uh, uh, rental housing. Uh, and uh, I think one of the big challenges is trying to do that in a scale that's appropriate for our uh, communities. We, uh, you know, uh, the state has put a lot of emphasis on, on trying to create more affordable housing. Um, but I think one of the downsides is that um, they really want to see developments of, of 50 units uh, or, or more. And I understand doing that, it, you know, it takes a lot of work and energy and effort and time uh, to get an affordable housing development built. But the problem is, uh, you know, and particularly in the smaller towns uh, on the Lower Cape, uh, there just isn't the land available to support uh, uh, that kind of scale of building. And so we're left with really trying to figure out a way to put together smaller uh, uh, projects that are really more appropriate, too, for the character of our, of our communities. Well, we're talking with Jay Coburn from the Community Development Project. Do you have a, a forum coming up? It's called The Art of Growing a Design-Based Business. It's on Thursday at the Wellfleet Preservation Hall. I'm wondering if you could just talk about how the idea for this forum uh, came to be. Sure. We're really excited about uh, about this uh, meeting. Um, and, you know, in the course of meeting with small business people in the Lower Cape, uh, we uh, kind of identified many folks here who are working um, uh, kind of very broadly in the design-related field. And so 
you know, that could range from a landscape architect to somebody who does graphic design to a website uh, designer uh, to uh, to an artist that's doing, you know, il- illustration and more mass market uh, uh, kind of uh, product. But one of the things about uh, these folks, these are usually people who are either working by themselves, uh, often out of, you know, a home-based business. Uh, and um, there is a bit of kind of isolation that they uh, face and, and not a whole lot of opportunity to kind of network and exchange ideas uh, with other people who are in similar fields and face similar challenges. So we thought it would be um, really helpful to bring these folks together kind of for two purposes. One, uh, one is to kind of help bring people together and, and uh, uh, have them be able to get ideas from each other and network. Um, but the other thing that we wanted to do, too, is let them know about the, the programs and services that we offer at the CDP so that, you know, for example, perhaps uh, uh, they need a microloan because they want to, oh, the web designer wants to buy a more you know, sophisticated uh, computer uh, station, you know, that we wanted to let people know that, that we have um, uh, uh, those programs available and we can kind of help them in, in growing and strengthening, and strengthening their, uh, their business. So in, in summary, this event is a not only a networking event, but also an opportunity to, to learn about the opportunities that you present with the CDP, but uh, also about other opportunities uh, elsewhere on the Cape. Exactly, exactly. And could you uh, talk about your partnership with uh, Oren Sherman? He's uh, going to be a big part of this event. Yes, so Warren's a, a really quite renowned uh, 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 illustrator. He's a uh, uh, an, uh, Rhode Island School of Design alumni. He's also been on the faculty there. Uh, is a Turo resident, and he's done um, all has worked with all kinds of different clients um, uh, around design. Uh, folks traveling in and out of uh, Logan Airport uh, may be familiar with his huge uh, posters that are welcoming welcoming people to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and some beautiful. Uh, illustrations of the of the cape he's also done covers for ll bean and uh, a stamp for the u.s postal service and uh, you know he's been able to do that uh, uh, while living in Turo. and so he's going to talk about the different strategies uh, and things that he's done to be able to, to grow his business and increase uh, sales and I think it's a you know this will be a great opportunity to uh, to hear how somebody else has, has done it uh, um, been able to make a really good living uh, in the design business yeah so an opportunity for uh, local artists and designers and what have you to to meet somebody who a lives on the Cape and, and has dealt with the uh, you know aspects of Cape Cod that we've already talked about the seasonal nature of it and a chance for uh, people to uh, really relate to somebody who has lived here and has succeeded here uh, when it comes to uh, art and design Absolutely. You know, I think, you know, we, we do have a very seasonal economy here, but uh, with modern technology and uh, the Internet and, uh, and high-speed Internet, there are also opportunities to open up uh, the rest of the world uh, as a market. And, uh, and so I, I think, what, you know, what we're going to hope to do through this uh, forum and supporting these small businesses is help people be able to live here year-round, um, but make a living that's not so dependent on the seasonal uh, economy and kind of can can tap into a broader worldwide market. So this event, the Art of Growing a Design-Based Business, once again happening Thursday at the Wellfleet Preservation Hall. Uh, do people have to register for this event? Yes, it would be great for folks to register. There's just a nominal $10 uh, uh, charge. Uh, the registration is available again at our uh, website, capecdp.org, or that they can uh, register by phone by calling us at area code 508 240 Seven eight seven three uh, and extension twenty two. Andrea would be happy to take people's registration. And is space limited for this event? Uh, no, we should be able to. I think we're expecting a crowd of about thirty to forty uh, uh, people, and we've still got uh, room for folks. But it is really imp- helpful if they can register in advance. Well, talking more about you as a whole and the Cape Cod uh, Development Partnership as a whole, you're very involved with the uh, Cape Cod Fishermen's Alliance. Could you talk a little bit more about your partnership with them? Yeah, we've got a great um, program that uh, we've worked uh, uh, with the Fishermen's Alliance for a number of years. Um, you know, I think your listeners are probably familiar with all of the regulatory changes that have happened in the fishery uh, and the transition to a new way of regulating um, uh, to, to you know, conserve the different uh, species. And it's something uh, called uh, quota uh, uh, that a fisherman or fishing business, you know, gets a share of the catch um, that they're allowed to use. 
And one of the problems, and kind of the unintended consequences of that, was was uh, the uh, a lot of that quota ended up uh, going to new fishermen and big fishing businesses in New Bedford and Gloucester. And so, in an effort to try to uh, bring quota back here, the the Fishermen's Alliance and the CDP uh, have gone out and purchased a quota that we lease back to our local small boat family-owned fishing uh, businesses um, at, 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 a, at either market rates or below market rates, uh, and in exchange for their you know getting that that uh, that discount on the on the uh, uh, on the lease price. We provide them with a lot of uh, support services and helping them strengthen their business uh, and helping them actually make that transition from the days when all you needed is a boat and a crew and you could go out and fish to today where it's, you know, it's a pretty sophisticated business that you've really got to be able to plan, uh, juggle a whole bunch of different uh, variables and also deal with um, pretty uh, sophisticated capital uh, markets in order to, to uh, purchase and, and hold, on to, uh, uh, hold on to the quota. So just another situation where the CDP is helping small businesses in particular uh, with a, a changing world and, and changing environments. Exactly. You know, economic development on Cape Cod is not going to be around, uh, you know, bringing in a huge factory that can employ 500 people that we need to figure out how to support and sustain uh, small businesses, uh, businesses that are, uh, you know, understand how fragile our environment uh, is out here and uh, and can help uh, employ people uh, uh, with with good paying jobs that, uh, that 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 kind of take advantage of uh, either the beauty of this uh, region or the natural resources uh, um, that we've got, and so that you know spans uh, a whole, the whole gamut there from uh, from fishing to people in, involved in the creative economy and uh, art and design, aquaculture, uh, agriculture, um, uh, hospitality, and tourism. You know there are a whole bunch of different sectors uh, that uh, that can thrive here on the Cape, but uh, but need uh, a lot of small business people kind of need help and support in figuring out how to do that. Well, unfortunately, we are just about out of time. Jay Coburn from the Community Development Partnership, thank you so much uh, for joining us this morning on Sunday Journal, and we wish you the best of luck uh, with not only this forum upcoming this week, but with uh, all your endeavors as well. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Once again, the Community Development Partnership is hosting a forum called The Art of Growing a Design-Based Business. The event will be held on Thursday at the Wellfleet Preservation Hall. I'm Matt McCarthy, and this is Sunday Journal. This podcast is a presentation of Cape Cod Broadcasting, which is solely responsible for its content. Thank you for listening. For more information, please visit us at capecodbroadcasting.com.